Many thanks for your company. The state says it is no longer interested in perusing the case involving two suspects accused of killing MP for a Boakwa North late JB Dankwa. The two suspects have subsequently been released from prison custody after almost a year and a half. The two persons confessed to attacking the late MP in his Shiashi residence in Accra on February 9, 2016 and stabbing him to death in the dead of the night. The family has since pressed for justice to be served them and the late politician in order to bring closure to the case. This morning, however, information reaching journeys indicates state lawyers from the Attorney General's department uh, perusing the case were in court this morning to express their disinterest in continuing uh, the case against the two suspects. No reason has been given the court. So what does this ruling uh, mean? We'll be getting more from legal practitioner and lecturer at the law faculty of the Central University College, uh, lawyer Iyawa Pong. But first, Mike Lee, Joseph Akablase in the studio with us. Now, Joseph, you've been to court a number of occasions, particularly uh, on this case. Tell us what led us to this point. Uh, we have come very far. I mean, the state, the matter started right from the district courts. It traveled all the way uh, to the high court. At the district court level, it was a committal process where the state was building a case against the two gentlemen. Now, the trial at the high court commenced uh, just last month. And in fact, we we're expecting a jury to be empaneled today. At last two weeks, that was to be done by the state attorney handling the case. As Sefa Kobacha told the court that there has been some new development, for which reason they were asking for an adjournment to enable them to come back before the empaneling of the jury can take place. She didn't tell the court exactly what the new development is, but this morning she told the court that they had filed a nolly prosecutor under Section 54 of the Criminal Procedures Act. Now, that essentially allows the AG's the, uh, representative handling a case to at any point, at any point in a trial, uh, decide to discontinue the case. And that is exactly what uh, she told the court this morning. Mm -hmm. uh, so what it means is that the two gentlemen will, need, uh, will be discharged from the court for now. So uh, just a bit of clarity. So uh, these two suspects have been discharged, but is the case still in court? What we understand is that the two, as it stands, there's no standing case against the two gentlemen, mm -hmm. but they could be rearrested. That is, if there's any new evidence that for which reason the state wants to prosecute this time around, mm -hmm. they could do so. But as it stands, there's no standing case against the two gentlemen. Interesting. Now, I'll have you hold on for a while. Let's speak to uh, lawyer Opong, who is with the law faculty of the Central University of Ghana. Good afternoon, sir. Thanks for your time. Thank you very much. Well, Not yet at the University of Ghana. Sure. Uh, thank, thank you very much. Sir. All right. Okay. Uh, so, Lawyer Pong, the state says it is no longer interested in the case and no reason has been given. Uh, the suspects have been released. Is, is that how it works within the legal space? Well, thank you very much. Well, to the extent that I understand the procedure, uh, as we know, the uh, people of Ghana have uh, given exclusive powers to the Attorney General to commence and maintain criminal proceedings in court. And therefore, the Attorney General has some wide discretion to determine, first of all, whether a set of facts are enough uh, to be the basis for the commencement of criminal proceedings. And where in the course of the proceedings, she believes that for some reason, or maybe no reason, the state is no more interested in the uh, in pursuit of the case, or that the state does not wish to continue with the prosecution. The Attorney General has such power. I'm told that under the U.S. law, uh, depending on the, uh, the state, the Attorney General may not have such wide discretion, and that you may have to seek leave of the court before the knowledge prosecutor can be effective. But we have adopted the English procedure, and it appears that when the Attorney General passed in court, uh, the state is not interested in pursuing the case, or the state does not wish to prosecute the case. That ends the matter, and the accused persons do not stand acquitted, but only discharged. Just to help yeah. us understand, is it strange uh, for suspects in a, in a case uh, like this, a case of murder, to be discharged without any reasons given? Well, uh, that's why the, the, the recent, uh, in recent times, this particular phrase, nolly prosecutor, has become popular. Mm. I think the state is now minded, especially after 
they declared by the Supreme Court in the Doji Saba case, where for, uh, from the beginning the gentleman protested that he had nothing to do with the crime. The state pursued it. For some reason, the state got uh, his conviction to murder. Only for the, uh, for the Supreme Court, the Court of Appeal, to discharge, to acquit this person, and then subsequently the Supreme Court, consistent with the Constitution, declared that we should pay the gentleman 54000 as compensation. And I think that any time the state believes that the prosecution, the continuous prosecution of a person may not uh, uh, result in maybe justice, whether conviction or acquittal, then it is important that the state should end at any point in time. And perhaps if further facts or stronger facts are discovered, the state, it doesn't mean the persons are acquitted. The state can always go for them mm. and proceed from there. All right, uh, Lawyer Pong, so does this bring a closure to the matter uh, in terms of the legal perspective? Well, <laughs> the fact is that somebody has died. The person did not die naturally, at least so we are told. The person, we are told, died out of uh, some harm, which harm we believe was uh, as a result of an unlawful harm. Perhaps that also the unlawful harm was inflicted intentionally also uh, with a view to perhaps killing him. So there is a pure case of murder or maybe, depending on the circumstances, manslaughter. And somebody who definitely would have committed that o o offense or alleged offense. And it is for the state through the appropriate institutions to continue with the investigations. I do not know what the attorney general knows now. Maybe perhaps from the investigation, uh, these people were not the uh, persons responsible and that they may be others for their continuous prosecution, which may eventually then cause us, the taxpayers to pay them compensation mm. will not be uh, appropriate now. Perhaps they are looking for others that they think may have been responsible for the crime. Uh, all right, uh, Lawyer Pong, you, uh, you may agree that this particular case uh, has a lot of high public interest, and a lot of people have been keenly following uh, proceedings in court. Many uh, may be disappointed by uh, the court's uh, or the decision of the state attorneys to discharge these two uh, suspects. In a case of such high public interest, is uh, this decision by state attorneys uh, the, the best option in the legal sense? Well, I would have wished that we should have similar declarations. In the first place, it, it, it is too common in Ghana that an accused person is taken to court only for the court to be told that, oh, my Lord, investigations are ongoing. Keep him in, in the cell. Remind him. That is not done anywhere. If you don't have the facts, if you don't have the full facts, if you think that the facts you have are not likely to result in justice. Why should you then uh, take the person to prison to suffer only for him to be eventually acquitted? But uh, Lawyer Pong, uh, these, these two suspects, sorry to butt in, but these two suspects ha have been uh, recorded as confessing to the act. Well, the fact is that if that is enough, why, why, why did they, uh, let me say this joking, why did they police send them straight away to? Uh, to someone. Mm. The law says that even when the offense is committed in your presence, you still have to take the person through criminal proceedings, and it is your duty to prove their guilt. And if you are unable to do that, I'm saying that we should not always be too much in a hurry to just take people to prison just because somebody, or to court for prosecution because somebody has made an allegation against them. Let us take our time, get the full facts maybe in terms of pictures, audio, and so on. And when the person even appears before you at the police station, you could start bargaining for uh, maybe how long he should stay, he should be convicted for what kind of punishment. Mm. Thank you for your time, yes, uh, Lawyer Apong, as a private legal practitioner, uh, giving us some legal perspectives into this particular matter. We've been in touch with the family and they've been reacting to the latest twist to this particular story. They say they are very disappointed in system justice should be served and we'll bring you more later on this developing story.
Meanwhile, police at Diasu in the central region are calling for immediate withdrawal of all military personnel deployed uh, to Dentro or Boise following the lynching uh, of a soldier by a mob. District Commander ASP Oseo Duajamang says the military presence is hampering police work as many residents have deserted the community for fear of arrest. Many people are said to have been uh, picked up by soldiers earlier today in a dawn swoop. ASP Edwajaman tells Insura FM's Ohiming Teria potential witnesses are either leaving the town or are afraid to volunteer information to the police. Last Sunday, around 2.30, police Diaz received information that some armed robbers have attacked motorists on the Diaso Dominase Highway. So we quickly we notified our police station at Dominase that they should mobilize and meet us. So we also come in. Yesterday around 10 a.m. I was in Dinkwao. Then I received several calls that armed robbers have attacked Dencho Boase. So quickly, I called my station officer, Chief Inspector Taiboa, that this is the information I have. So he should mobilize men and quickly move to the scene. Meanwhile, he also called the Nchoboasi, uh, Dominasi police to come for assistance. Now, about one hour later, my station officer called me that when they go to the scene, the suspected arm robber has been linked to death by unidentified mob. Now, when I returned to Diaso, my station officer told me when they were getting ready to go, the assemblyman at the Nchoboase, Honorable William Ba, came and made a report that he received information that there was a man walking along the road coming towards the Nchoboase. And they have seen a pistol hidden at the back of the man. And they suspect him to be one of the armed robbers. So quickly, according to the assemblyman, he got two other colleagues to join him. And as they were coming, they met the deceased now he said when he decided to approach the deceased the deceased quickly pulled a pistol at him so he managed to escape and then came to the police and made the report but unfortunately when the police got to the scene he has been lynched to death so currently we have started our investigation as to who might have been the culprits. Now, around 7 p.m., that was the same day yesterday, three soldiers in uniform came to our station here, and their senior man, WO2, Lawrence Achiayao, informed police that their captain, that the detachment commander here, the captain went on jogging in the morning and as at 4 p.m., he had not returned. And they, the soldiers had information that a suspected armed robber had been linked to death at the Nchiroboase and the body sent to Dunkwa Government Hospital. So they followed to the mortuary and there they saw that the deceased was their army captain. Police are trying very very hard to get them even this morning we tried to make contact but we couldn't get them the reason being that we were told that last night most of the youth in the Nchiroboase town left the place because they had information that soldiers would be coming to the Nchiroboase. this morning when i passed around i saw soldiers in the town in fact i didn't get closer to them but i saw soldiers in the town so by all means, police are looking for the assemblyman because he is our complainant in this case. And then he will help us to get the other two police who accompanied him.
Then maybe we, when we have these three, perhaps from what they will tell us, it will lead us to somewhere. Our men are still in the town of Dentro Boise and we'll be bringing you updates uh, in subsequent bulletins. Still uh, within the military, we are not moved by the monetary gains we enjoy as peacekeepers, but the satisfaction from maintaining peace across the world. Those are the words of the Deputy Public Relations Officer of the Ghana Armed Forces, Lieutenant Colonel Ernestina Assan. Her words come after the world marked peacekeeping day yesterday. International Peacekeepers Day is used to celebrate all peacekeepers who've lost their lives on duty. This year's theme is investing in peace around the world. She started by expressing the military high command's condolences to the bereaved family of the army captain who was lynched by residents of Dentro Boise yesterday. She spoke on news, John News Desk earlier. We had an induction mm. service for our CDAs and then the chief of army staff. It's quite sad. In fact, we are all in total shock as I speak now. I've not had a good sleep since mm. yesterday. You know, the news hit us yesterday died. Mm. And it was so, 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 so bad. Uh, what has been the major challenge for, for peacekeepers? The economic gains through are there. But the major challenge, my dear, is funding. Mm. Yes, you will agree with me that it hasn't been all easy and rosy. We do have challenges and logistic constraints. At times, the equipment that we deploy do not meet the standard that will require us to receive reinvestment. And then insecurity, you know of late, UN personnel have become targets for terrorism mm. acts. Yeah, that's one too is there. And a host of others. Because you'd realize that with investing, you hope to see some dividends. Mm. But with peacekeeping, the investment that you see is all about capacity building. Yes. So it's like you invest and you don't really see what comes out of it. In terms of physical cash. Physical cash. But this is a worthy cause that we've decided to follow. So I think we should put in all our best and do it. Now of late, I think we are getting some physical cash in terms of when you deploy the good uh, equipment. And I think the government must really look at that very well and then invest in that. I think it's going to be one of the main source of revenues for our country because some other countries are doing very well on that and I think they are really making it. Mm. And now you've spoken about the challenges. Let's talk about the benefits. When we go keep peace, what we do is we control and suppress such conflicts so that they don't spill over into our, our countries. So it's high time we look at that. And then it is a time that we exert influence in world affairs and then enhance our image and prestige in the international system. Watch and join us today with me, Benis Abubedu. We'll take a quick breather. When we come back, I'll be bringing you some updates on the 14 residents of Somenya who were arrested yesterday following a protest in the town. You're watching John News Desk with me, Benis Abubeidu. Now, the 14 residents of Somenya who were arrested yesterday following a protest in the town are currently before the Koforidia Circuit Court B. The suspects burned a police vehicle and vandalized other properties. They had been agitating against huge electricity bills and the release of the assemblyman who was arrested in a protest last Friday. Correspondent Kofi Siam joins us live on the line. Hello, Kofi. Good afternoon. What can you report from the court? Well, the suspects, uh, 14 of them, have just been brought in. They came about uh, five minutes ago. As I speak, security here at the court is very tight. Uh, I can see the operational commander for the Eastern Region Police Commander, ASP, K.O. Boatin, and his men, who are very well armed um, to ensure that the place is safe for the court process to 
uh, take place. Uh, let me tell you that uh, Honorable Jones Tete, who is, who is believed to be the ringleader of the gang that attacked the police station yesterday, uh, is also here. And uh, all of them are men. They are male uh, suspects who have been brought before the court. Uh, they're waiting for the station judge uh, to come so that the case uh, can start. Mm. And uh, so can you just uh, briefly tell us the demeanor of these 14 suspects? Well, some of them are showing signs of remorse. Others are also seen uh, waving at family members and friends who are in court to offer support to uh, them. And uh, I can tell you that some of them are very remorseful. Mm. Uh, almost all of them, they are showing signs of, of remorsefulness. So mm. the court process uh, is just about starting. The judge is sitting for the process to start. So uh, as and when the case is called, and since I had, we will report to you what transpired here. Sure. Thank you very much, uh, Kofi Siang, coming to us from the eastern region town of Koforidua. Uh, away from that, the one-week ultimatum by the Accra Metropolitan Assembly directing the closure of illegal landfill sites ends uh, tomorrow among one of the illegal landfill sites is the popular Lavender Hill at Kolegono. John News' Mapito Sibiri visited the site and reports that offensive stench that greets passers-by polluting the atmosphere at 24 hours all day and night is almost absent. The much-anticipated closure of the popular Lavender Hill officially took effect on 29th May 2017. This hopefully is expected to bring an end to the famous nose-blasting stench which has for a long time polluted the atmosphere in the Jamestown and Choco communities. Passers-by, drivers and passengers, as well as residents in surrounding communities, have had to inhale the terrible and offensive smell emanating from fecal matter constantly discharged into the sea on a daily basis. Right now, everything is good. At first, everyone who passed by just took the lights and dumping refuse into the sea. But now that has stopped because when you're seen doing this, you'll be arrested. Construction of the Mudo fecal treatment plant close by is deemed the best solution and option to dealing with the problem. Here, operators of the sewer trucks who discharge the content of their vehicles directly into the sea in the full glare of the public are now to send the fecal matter collected to the newly commissioned plant at a small token for further treatment. The Waste Management Director at the Accra Metropolitan Assembly, Anthony Mensa, emphasized the commitment of the Assembly to ensuring the President's request to making Accra the cleanest city in Africa. Clean means clean. It means zero tolerance for food, pollution, and unauthorized developments. It also means high citywide appetite for clean environment, clean water, and orderly developments. Leapfrogging from the dirtiest to the cleanest in Africa is undeniably an uphill task and requires a lot more than slogans, rhetorics, speeches, and sound bites. Even though this may be important on occasions to shape behaviors and mobilize support for the vision, this vision will be achieved if residents, visitors, religious bodies, businesses, development partners, charities, and the public sector agencies operating in the city really commit to it. It requires a kind of concerted leadership commitment and attitudes by all that overtly different from the kind and created, encouraged, and tolerated the scholar in the first place. It also requires unbending political will. The president has set the tone. The ministry will give policy directions, and AMA will take it forward.
A filling station attendant who spoke to me off camera was however concerned about the cost of treatment at the Muda Fecal Treatment Plant. They are really, really working hard. What I'm crying for them is they are using a lot of power to generate all this thing. And that's why I one day wish that government will really get involved to help them. Because I sell fuel to them and I know how much money they waste in buying the diesel to produce this thing. So if government doesn't really get involved to help them, I think they will very soon get discouraged and this thing will go back into the sea. Mapito CBD for Joy News. Well, let's get more on this. We are joined in studio by the Public Relations Officer of the Accra Metropolitan Assembly, Numo Blasso. Good afternoon, Numo. Thank good you so much uh, for joining us. Uh, this seems to be some good news coming from uh, the Accra Metropolitan Assembly. Lavender Hill, we hear. We're getting good reports. My colleague visited the area, and we can tell uh, for a fact that uh, the, the, the waste uh, of fecal matter that was uh, usually dumped into that particular lagoon is, is, is coming to a stop. Uh, but what plans do you have to rid the city centres uh, with all the forms of litter uh, around the place? I mean, for example, you look at where the hawkers are selling and you look around them and you can almost immediately tell that this waste is generated by the hawkers themselves. How are we planning, you know, as we uh, prevent these uh, uh, waste companies from dumping waste at uh, uh, unauthorized s landfill sites? How are we also dealing with the other filth in city centers? Thank you. Let me begin by saying you mentioned um, Lavender Hill. If you look at the issue at Lavender Hill now, it isn't as it was before because then they were dumping, not in the lagoon, they were dumping directly into the sea. And today it is not as it was before. Now, we realize that, yes, we have waste management contractors who have been allotted to our various submetros. AMA has 10 submetros. Now we have 11 waste management contractors or companies working within the submetros. And there are areas where their tracks cannot reach. Therefore, we have these tricycles going into those areas to take the refuse from there. Now, instead of these tricycles giving it to the waste management contractors, they have also devised their own way of disposing of this refuse, like the one we have behind the ICGC church at Abosokai. Mm. Then there is another one just where we cited this um, project, the ASDA project that we normally refer to as county project. They are also dumping there and other areas. So last week, in collaboration with the Ghana Police Service, we called their leadership and a, a majority of those um, engaging that activities over at the club site. And we informed them that we're giving them up to tomorrow. Mm. That is one week from that day to desist from dumping their refuse at that place behind the, at the club site and then the one behind the ICGC. Mm. And all other areas where we have not actually um, mentioned me it meant for, or the places where they are not meant for dumping of refuse. Okay. And then we did redirected them to the Kokomemle transfer station. We have another one at Achimot, and that is the Zoom Park, which was opened a few weeks ago. And then there is another one at Malam. Mm. So when they collect their refuse from the households, they should send them to these areas. And we're giving them one week to desist or stop those activities. Now, the waste management contractors, they have an umbrella association called the ESPA, that is the Environmental Sanitation Providers uh, Association. And so they are to register these tricycle operators and then work with them so that they can assist them where they feel that, oh, if you should bring your truck here, we'll be able to give you our refuse mm -hmm. and all that. I mean, how they will yeah. actually manage. Uh, all right, Numo, so the one week ultimatum ends tomorrow. Yeah. If they do not adhere to the directive, what happens? There will be prosecution because we, are in, we did that in collaboration with the police. And I think that the, the police um, chief, is, um, chief superintendent, Kwesi Fori, was there to also address them that we meant what we are saying. 
So if they refuse to abide by the rules that is being laid for them to follow, then anybody arrested will be prosecuted. Mm. Now, Numa, we've, we've seen a lot of interventions by the AMA. It would be very unfair for anybody to say that we've not seen or heard some of these interventions. What makes this one different from others? What, makes, uh, what should make us believe that we would, we would see persistent and sustainable results with this one? Well, um, sometimes the AMA will go ahead and then issue these warnings and all that. But then the difference is that this time you have the police with the AMA telling the people what not to do and what to do. Therefore, the police in that have also committed themselves to um, what the AMA wish to do. Because we 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 seen that there is this kind of attitude where people are now dumping refuse at any other place. Mm. You walk along the road and refuse is just packed as if there were some baggage being wait, waiting for to be loaded onto trucks and all that. And that, isn't, that shouldn't be the case. Mm. So we are very serious on this issue that whoever is seen dumping refuse at any other place aside the Kokomlimne transfer station, the Achimota zone park and then Malam transfer station, that person will be arrested. Mm. And, and Numo, finally before you leave, you know, sometimes these uh, heaps of rubbish you talk about or packaged uh, rubbish you talk about are actually not dumped by these tricycle operators. I have seen people pack their vehicles, private vehicles, uh, to dump some of these uh, 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 rubbish by the roadside. What are you also doing to address it from the angle of individual citizens? Um, it's, it's, it's very pathetic when people who should know better do or engage themselves in such situations and this time we are we've had um, the police also going to give us some men mm. who will be on patrols and all that so we hope we'll be able to arrest the situation of people engaged in such activities mm. even at night because they do those things on the blind side of authority when everybody is away okay. and then they come and pack those things so we have the assurance of the police sure. in assisting us in, in that um, area so we hope that this time we're going to do something mm -hmm. for and then you see our appeal to citizens that yes we have the other day or some time ago i placed the number that if you see someone dumping refuse at any other place aside where we have designated mm. just take a picture we don't need your identity just take a picture of the person in the area and whatsapp the in uh, fact we what, have some what's the number again um the number is zero two zero seven nine eight five zero one three i think Okay. Whoa. All right. Uh, we'll, we may have to cross check, but we'll yes. still uh, uh, let viewers. And there are other two number more numbers which I will add to. Add to. But yeah. uh, Numo, Saturday is June 3. What is the AMA doing quickly uh, as we uh, commemorate that twin disaster again? In fact, I'm just from a discussion and I've come on this issue. We're mm. going to commemorate the, um, the, that disaster. In fact, to remind ourselves that, yes, we as a people have a duty the duty of keeping our environment clean because if you look at the that day what actually caused the flooding mostly was refuse garbage and it is in this slide that AME has not sat down since then we've been doing a lot clearing the Odo channel and the Koli lagoon to avert this kind of problem so on Saturday in fact it's beginning on I think Friday where we're going to have um, the Muslim prayers we're going to have worship to um, uh, church service and then um, there is an idea of putting up a, memori a memorabilia or a plaque to uh, remind us of this issue and it's a whole lot of program that we are we are going to do but since we are not complete it will be difficult for me to to, to, to share to, but, would, yeah. uh, but but the AMA is planning something of and course, we'll reach you for of course, the details. in collaboration with I think Zoom Lion is part we have Goel as part, and then mm. we have the local churches council around the uh, Adabraka area being part of it, and right. a lot of individuals. Sure. Thank you very much for your time. You're Nubu welcome. Blafo is the PRO of the Accra Metropolitan Assembly.